first and foremost, I guess the biggest thing that I had to learn from you know, the ripe old age of 10 or 11 years old when I was starting this journey, I, first of all, I was very, very fortunate to find my passion at a, such an early age. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't happen to a lot of people. And it's not like you wake up one morning and you're like, oh my God, this is exactly what I want to do. It will never be like that. It has never been like that. But it was almost this continuous idea of, and I guess this kind of attacks the how, like how do we make people care almost. Mm -hmm. It was this idea of, I was always that kid who wanted to put a smile on everyone's face. I played piano at hospitals and assisted livings for so long. I was the person who would bring in presents during my birthday to give to other people. <laughs> um, I was that kid. And so that just slowly started to combine with my love of science and just Together, that, that's really who I am, right? And I used to call it, I use science for kindness, which truly is what innovation is. And I think the biggest way to make people care is almost thinking like a little kid, not restricting yourself with a box around your head and not putting yourself out there and recognizing that, you know, oh, I might fail or I might mess up. The biggest thing that I learned with failure is the worst thing that's gonna happen is you mess up. Or the worst thing that's gonna happen is that someone says no, right? but there's never a limit to the amount of times you can keep trying. And especially as a student, it's better to mess up now when it doesn't matter than in the future where it might, right? <laughs> and so I, say, I like to say the same thing to a lot of like the adults and organizations that I speak to, right? When it comes to failure, it's only failure if you view it in that way, right? I like to look at failure as messing up when it doesn't matter and moving forward from there, making your ideas stronger, making your ideas better because without failure, the ideas that I have right now may not be at the place where it is today. Mm -hmm. I may have stopped where I wanted it to stop. I may not have grown it beyond what, what I thought could really happen. So that's a little bit about failure, but another thing that I had to get over was my fear of asking for help. Mm -hmm. um, I've been a very, I guess I'd like to say independent person. I was so like, I was so, I guess, within myself, right? I had ideas, I wanted to get bring these ideas to life. I didn't want to accept help, right? The biggest thing that I also had to learn is it's okay to accept help, right? Especially when you're 12 or 13 years old, trying to get into a lab, trying to work on ideas, it's okay to ask for help. And so if I had to make one request to all of you, right, if you take away nothing else from what I say, it would be to um, you know, find a student or look for a mentee and mentor them, right? It doesn't have to be in an area that they're, you know, you're personally passionate about, but find a way to guide them through their process. Now, if we were at a more you know, student-centric conference, I'd say find a student and hand them your business card, right? And when I talk to students, I always say, for every business card that you get handed, take advantage of it. Reach out to them, make that connection. And so mentorship has absolutely been one of the pillars of support in my journey, and I wouldn't be up on the stage without mentorship, without failures even across the way. And it's important to, it's, it's a learning experience, all of it is. So it's important to accept it and it will take time and it's much easier said than done. But it, it accounts for better ideas, better, I guess, better methods to keep growing your ideas and a stronger individual, I'd like to say as well.